John Lusk here of Lusk Archery Adventures. Serious testing, successful hunting. I'm really excited about the broadhead battle that I have going down today. I've been waiting for this one for a while. It's the Battle of the Annihilators. Dun, dun, dun. In this corner, I've got the Annihilator original. You've seen me test this before. Check out that video if you've not done so already. In this corner, I've got the new Annihilator XL. It's just like a bigger version of the original. So I'm really eager to put these to the test and see how they perform. But before I get into that, I want to introduce some new things that I'm going to be doing in my testing from now on. You might think, well, I thought you just came up with a new regimen for 2021. I did, but I already have some tweaks that I want to make to it because I just want things to be even better. The first is I have a new system for measuring sharpness. I believe it's going to be more accurate and more consistent than the push paper test. And that's using this sharpness testing machine by Edge on Up. The way it works is there's a little aluminum wire that's held together by two supports and I'll press down with a broadhead on that wire and then this scale will measure in grams how much pressure it takes for that broadhead, that blade, to cut through that wire. And so I'll have that rating and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it for every broadhead right out of the package, see how many grams of pressure it takes to cut through the, the, the wire and then I'm going to do it also after penetration test one. So after I've shot it through that, that composite that's two-thirds inch of rubber foam mat, half inch of MDF and then a, a, a ballistic gel, clear ballistics, FBI grade ballistic gel, after one shot like that I'm going to test it again and see how the edge has changed. So that'll be a good consistent measure of out-of-the-box sharpness as well as edge retention. Now another change that I'm making is in terms of flight. I want my flight test to be a bit more realistic. So rather than doing the 70 yard shot at a balloon, which I may do again in the future, I'm going to be shooting three arrows at 40 yards into a target. And I'm going to do uh, one field point and then two broad heads. And I'm gonna see how consistently those heads group together. Now, this is all within my margin of error. So if it's putting up a group there within five inches, then I'm gonna consider that good. There's some days that, man, I can, I can hit a quarter with all three. There's other days that I can't do that, okay? But as long as it's grouping within like four or five inches like that, then I'm gonna consider that a really good flying broad head. Another change that I'm making for 2021 is I've come up with a Lusk Archery Adventure score for every broadhead. For every broadhead, based on what it's designed to do and how well it does that, how well it performs according to what its design was intended to be, I'm going to give it a rating of zero to 10 golden arrows. 10 golden arrows means creme de la creme. This head is fantastic, okay? So I'm gonna be doing that for all the broadheads that I test for the remainder of the year. And I may do that for some of the broadheads that I've already tested, just to, uh, to let you know what my golden arrow rating for those would be. So those are the three changes that I'm gonna make. Now, I'm also gonna be using some different arrows for my flight and some of the penetration tests. I'm using the Bishop FOC King arrow for uh, some of the more durable uh, tests, like durability tests, like through SEAL, I may be using the, uh, the Bishop Fad Eliminator. It's a firearms dispatch eliminator, has a nice footing on the end, and that prevents the steel from cutting through the, the shaft. And then for some of the concrete tests, I'm using this, this tank of an arrow by Bishop Archery. It's called the GOAT. Okay, this goat with a 125 grain tip weighs 1300 grains. I mean, this thing is like, it's a weapon in and of itself. It feels like, I mean, like a tent stake. I mean, like a giant tent stake or something. I don't even know what to compare it to. It's like a spear. That's what it's like. It feels like a spear. This is, it's called the goat because they consider it the greatest of all time. This is like the best of the best when it comes to arrows. So I'm gonna be doing a future video just on this arrow, but I wanna introduce it because I'll be using it in some of my testing. All right, so I'm excited to uh, let this new protocol begin and let this annihilator broadhead battle begin. 
Here's a good look at the Annihilator, and you see both models here. You can see the original and then the XL. The original has a cutting diameter of 0.91 inches, and the XL has a cutting diameter of 1 and 1 16th inches, or 1.06 inches. So 0 0.91, 1.06, about a, what, 17% difference or something like that. You'll notice with this head, if you're not familiar with it, that it's not just three blades. Okay, you look at it from the top and you go, Wait, what's going on there? Okay, it's cool, it's not just three blades, but it's rather like three scoops. And so if you compare it, say, to a Shuttle T, which is just a classic three-blade head, when this Shuttle T goes through an animal, it's gonna make like a circular hole in the middle surrounded by three slits. But this, rather, in the Annihilator, is going to really take out a triangular chunk of tissue out of an animal. So they say don't be fooled by the relatively small cutting diameter because it's actually displacing so much surface area. It will be displacing so much tissue by making not just three slits, but making a really nice big hole through the animal. Now this, uh, this scoop design does a few things, practically speaking. First of all, it's supposed to aid in flight that as the head is flying, the air kind of passes uh, away from the head and away from the arrow shaft, and it creates a, an easier channel for the arrow shaft to fly through. It doesn't have as much friction in the air as would a normal head with just three slits like that, like I was showing you with the Shuttle T. So it's supposed to aid in flight, but then it does that same thing within an animal, that as it's penetrating an animal, this, uh, rather than just the three blades passing through, it forces the tissue away through the scoop, away from the arrow shaft, and it allows the arrow shaft to glide through a lot more easily, increasing its penetration ability. So that's the idea behind it, a tremendous amount of tissue being displaced, but in a relatively small diameter, small package there. Now, some other things that are really cool about it is it's just one singular piece of tool steel. It's 4140 tool steel, which is a really strong tool steel. And the blades themselves, as by my measurements, are 0 0.040 inches thick. But again, just one solid piece like that. They're brought to a Rockwell hardness of 52. So that allows it to be resharpenable, but also allows it to be pretty strong and resist impact. Let's see how these two annihilators perform, and let's see how they stack up against each other. Here's the annihilator original size, and you can see the two broadheads there on the left, dead center, the, uh, the field point. I dropped just a little bit. Here's the Annihilator XLs. The field point is in the middle at the top, and then the, uh, the XLs are on either side. Annihilator, out of the box sharpness. 450 grams. And don't mind this reading if it's different initially because the internal algorithm accounts for that. Annihilator XL. 475 grams. First we'll go with the original Annihilator and then the XL. The original penetrated seven and a half inches, and the XL penetrated seven and one quarter inches. Annihilator original, after penetration test one. 475. Annihilator XL, after penetration test one. 525. The original penetrated through 65 layers. The XL penetrated through 59 layers.
Here you can see the holes that the annihilators made in the steel plate. On the left is the original, and then on the right is the XL. And you can see they made great triangular chunk holes, not just three slits like some heads will do. Now, I will say that I don't think it's really any different than the holes that an Exodus would make or a tooth of the arrow or like a, a solid steel three blade, like a Bishop Holy Trinity, those all make triangular holes really similar to this. But I do prefer those to just three slits. I mean, they make a lot more internal damage and a lot more bloodletting than just the three slits do. Here's the Annihilator original after being shot into the steel plate five times spins true and it's in fantastic shape. You really can't even tell it's been shot, let alone shot through a steel plate five times. And here's the XL. It too spins perfectly true and like the original, you just can't even tell it's been shot, let alone shot through steel plate five times. Okay, look how deeply this is <laughs> embedded. This is the XL. I can't believe how, man, that is like really, really stuck in there. I mean, I'm not budging it at all. I'm gonna try it with these arrows. These are like the super arrows by Bishop. They're called the goats, greatest of all time. Got it. Here's the original. After being shot through the steel plate five times and into that concrete. Spins perfectly well, even with a bunch of concrete still embedded at the end. It's just in excellent shape. Even the tip is intact. The edges are intact. Now let's look at the XL. Spins perfectly well. Even with all this concrete, if there's any wobble, it's because of this concrete. Man, the tip on this one is just super sharp. I mean, it is not blunted at all. Edges are in perfect condition. Man, what can I say about the durability of these heads? That's fantastic. Now I'm going to talk a bit about resharpening the Annihilator. You saw how durable it is and it holds its edge really well, which is great. But if you want to get it really sharp, one method of sharpening it is super easy because it's a three blade solid 60 degree bevel angle. You just lay it flat on any stone or any surface, any flat surface, and you just stroke it like that gently. And you just got to make sure that you have the same number of strokes on each side. And you do that until it comes out just like you got it from the factory, okay? It's super easy to do. You can do it in the field. Again, you can do it on any surface. I love that about these three blade 60 degree bevel heads. But there's another method, Stay Sharp Guide, which I just love. I love the stuff they come out with. They come out with individual sharpeners that are not very expensive at all for different styles of broadheads. And they put an, a, a, an edge on those heads better than how you got them from the factory, okay, in most cases. And they have something designed just to put an extra sharp edge on these three blade 60 degree heads. Because one of the drawbacks of this is you can only get it so sharp with that 60 degree bevel. So what Stay Sharp Guide has come out with is this curved surface that will, it, instead of the 60 degree bevel, it will put a 44 degree bevel on each of these blades, 
which will allow them to be that much sharper, okay? And it's really simple. It comes, this whole system just comes with everything you need. It comes with the paper, the, the wet dry sandpaper of different grits. It comes with a rubbing compound. It comes with a, a method to hold the broadhead so you don't cut yourself. It comes with card stock and even comes with this um, this little image there that you just hold your phone over it and then it goes right to the YouTube channel to show you how to do it. But basically, you just lay the broadhead on this surface just like you would on a flat surface, but it's curved. And you just make sure that you do the same number of strokes on each side, just gently. And you can start with the rough grit and then you can work your way up to the super fine grit and then you can use the cardstock and the, uh, the rubbing compound to get it extra super polished and sharp. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'm gonna see how sharp I can get these annihilator heads using this Stay Sharp Guide 344. Okay, so now let's test the sharpness. This is the one that I did uh, at just the 60 degree flat, resharpening it that way. 450. And then here's the one using the 344 Stay Sharp Guide Sharpener. 275. Man, that's a significant difference. This thing really makes them sharp. Okay, so what'd you think of this broadhead battle? This annihilator broadhead battle? And both of them performed really well and had some great strengths. Like I said earlier in the video, my critique of the original was just the size of the cut. I know it's got some really cool features and it's incredibly durable, flies super well, penetrates exceedingly well, but I just have been a little concerned about that small cut, though I've heard good things about it from some people who've used it in the field. But I wish that there was a larger one. And then now you have this XL and the XL still penetrated really well and it still flew really well and it was just still extremely durable. So for me and my hunting purposes like hunting whitetails and hogs and stuff like that day in and day out, the broadhead battle winner of the Annihilator broadhead battle is the XL. <music>